Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. I'm going to pick up right where we left off with the last video. Uh, we were about to get the first row of our table model working and running with tests. So we've got something really basic here. And um, I want to replace this with some proper code. So, but first I'm going to get rid of that hello world. It's, it's bugging me. So, um, Let's get rid of that. Yeah, okay. So let's get the table model, the first row of the table model working right. And I think what we want to do is I want to have the year, uh, well, let's just say it's 2010, and we're going to need a starting principle and a starting balance. So the starting principle will be 10,000 and the starting balance, or starting balance will be 10,000, starting principle will be 7,000. And then that is going to show up, I want to see that show up here, and then we'll get to this in a moment. So let's just start with the year. Um, and it occurs to me that maybe this year should be a should not be a primitive. It probably should not be a primitive. So that's something for us to consider. Okay. So this is going to be starting balance. Okay, the tests are going to work, but the application won't run because it's not going to compile. Yeah, because we changed the constructor. So we need a year, and this is all just stub code. This is just so I can do my desk checks. So we will come back and fix this at some point. Um, we may be limited in how much TDD we can do on this code because it is heavy UI code and UI code usually is very hard to test. Um, fortunately with Swing we are we're kind of avoiding the problem by working in the models. And uh, yes that's cheating and yes that's how it works. Uh, you, cheat, <laughs> you cheat your way to success. You just take off small pieces of the problem, sneak up on it um, over and over again until there's hardly anything left, and what there is left is really easy. So, yes, I am avoiding all the hard questions, and that's intentional. So, uh, first row, I guess what we want to do is we want to assert that the first row here is going to be, um, well, the first value is going to be 2010. Get value at 0, 0. Okay, that fails, expected 2010. We can just return 2010 to start with. That should work. And I should see that show up, yeah, all the way across the board. Excellent. So now let's return the actual year. work. And now we want to see, now I'm returning dollars, I'm planning on checking that we've got a dollars here, but um, I'm not sure how that's going to work with the model. So I know it, you can return an object, but I'm not sure how it will render, so we'll have to see. I think maybe it will just call to string on whatever we've got. Anyway, that's going to fail because we're not returning it.
That should work. Yep, now let's see how it renders. Okay, we're definitely gonna have to do some polish on this. Um, we want commas, we probably want these to be right justified. That's stuff I'm gonna save for later. Okay, let's keep going. Oh wait, I think there was some refactorings I needed to do. Um, yeah, and my tests. I want these to be constants. That's pretty clever. Okay, that fails as I would expect. and we should get the correct thing here. Yep. Okay, let's um let's refactor this. set the default case to just return a blank for now. Um, that's really not good enough. That's enough to make the test pass. What I want this to do is fail fast. I want to write a little, have this throw a little exception because if this ever gets, if this default case ever gets called, that means that this code is wrong or something's wrong somewhere. So, you need to fail fast. And actually, I've been putting off doing fail fast. There's other things I want to put fail fast assertions around. Um, and I've been putting that off because I don't think that code's gonna be super interesting from a video perspective. And if I wasn't doing the videos, I probably would have written it by now. It's sort of simple, dumb code, but it would take you know a good five, ten minutes to write, which is a whole episode. So I might do it off camera, but it's uh, there's you know it's interesting enough to be worth doing. But I want to make more progress, which is why I haven't done it yet. Okay, so we'll we'll come back to that. Probably when we're doing cleanup on this code, uh, we'll finally get that in. Okay, let's get the rest of this. Uh, now this, unlike this, which was just a bunch of hard-coded strings, I actually do want to write, put in all of the values I expect here, um, because there's real code behind that. It's not just a list of strings. By the way, for this, I could have had the assertion use the same constant here, but that would have been I was recoding this test or that code in my test. And I try to avoid doing that because what I'd be saying is assert equals constant zero model.column name zero. I try to avoid doing that because you want to express what you're checking in your test differently than the way you express it in your production code. If you do it the same way in both cases, you're not testing. You're, you're not testing your code, you're just you know, duplicating yourself. Um, the reason test-driven development works is because you say it one way here and a different way here, which means that it's more, it's, it's more likely that if you made a mistake that they won't match. But if you do the same thing the exact same way each time, then it's not going to provide a lot of value. 
So I really try to avoid putting logic in my test code. I hard code everything so that, and I don't do loops and I don't do if statements unless I'm doing, you know, helper methods, uh, so that I'm writing my concepts here differently than I'm writing my concepts here. Uh, just like double entry bookkeeping, if they don't add up, if they don't match, I've made a mistake. Sometimes I've made a mistake in my test, sometimes I've made a mistake in my production code. But either way, uh, I find the mistake. If I do it the same way each time, eh, I'm just duplicating myself. It's I'm just taking twice as much time to do the same thing. Okay, uh, moving on. Next, we need to get withdrawals. And we're not going to have any withdrawals, so let's just put that as zero. Okay. That should fail, yep. And now we need to do it right. I'm going to start by just returning a zero, so our test passed. And, but now I'm going to refactor. So I can't, actually doing these variables was wrong, the wrong thing to do in terms of long term. What I really need to do is to say, um, well, I don't have the year. Yeah, what I need to do is say, the market year is equal to a new stock market year. We have that take the starting balance, starting principal. Oh, uh, interest rate, capital gains, tax rate. Okay, that's going to fail all over the place. And let's go ahead and toss that into our application stub code as well. Okay, that should still all pass. Yep, it should still all run. Yep. Now, um, got our market year. Now I should be able to say, this isn't part of the market year, but this is. Uh -huh. Now we're hooking it into our domain model. This is where the fun starts. Okay, so this should all just work. Yeah. Oh, great. Great. And that's a total drawing. Fantastic. And that, well, there's no difference there. Okay, great. Cool beans. All right, let's get the rest of this in. We've got just a minute left. Can I get it all in? Eh, maybe. Starting balance, withdrawals, appreciation, which is going to be a thousand. You know, that does raise the question. Um, I'm having to redo these calculations, which means that um, if I change the way the domain model works, this test will break. And some people really dislike that, and they use a technique called mock objects, if you're familiar with that, uh, to prevent that, to really dissociate one layer of their code from the other. Um, I don't do that because I want this test to break. If I change something in the domain model that changes my assumptions here, I want this test to break. Uh, the reason people use domain or mock objects is because they don't want huge numbers of tests to break. But I think that's a question of design and just having good coupling. So I'm sure we'll talk about that more, but uh, that's it for my time today. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.